Defining Software Defined Networking, or SDN. If I were able to somehow magically summarize and analyze all the student questions I've received over the last five years, Software Defined Networking, or SDN, would definitely climb to the top of the list, if not be the top question I've been asked, and rightly so. This has the potential to change everything. And people get a little freaked out. They're like, oh no, my job as a network engineer is going away. No, no, it's not. It's just changing. It's going to be different in how we approach things. See, right now we pr approach things through what's called traditional network infrastructure. It's how we've been doing it for decades. You come to a new site and you're like, okay, we need a switch to connect everything. So you pull a switch out of the box, put it in the rack, plug in the cables, connect to the console port, and da -da 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 -da, configure the host name, da -da -da -da. Uh, IP address, da -da -da, VLAN configuration, da -da -da, port descriptions. You know, you're going through and configuring that device individually, managed and controlled by its own processes, right? So you're done. Bing. Okay, let's pull a router out of the box, plug it into the rack, da -da 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 -da, you know, configure IP addresses, da -da -da -da, NAT settings, access control lists, down and down and down we go. There's been some attempts to try and automate those processes, different third-party packages, even Cisco creating uh, Cisco Works, which was uh, not the best product, but uh, something that tried to uh, automate and, and centralize some of the control of the system. But we didn't really see full control and a full automation of the processes. You started seeing hints of it with things like the wireless controller, right? Where you actually have a wireless controller device up here that can control thousands of these little wireless access points, making them essentially plug and play. And we start to see kind of a sneak peek of what SDN might look like, to where the wireless devices, the wireless access point, becomes like these little drones that are all controlled by the central manager. But we, we just relegated all that to, oh, that's a, that's a wireless thing because we have so many of these wireless access points, it'd be impossible to try and manage them all individually. That could never apply to things outside of wireless or... Could it? Now you start to see the new world of SDN, right? Some people call SDN network programmability, which allows you to have software controllers that deploy, manage, and monitor all the network devices, not just the wireless access points, but your switches and your routers, and can adapt to an ever-changing environment. Like right now, I'm at the end of 2016, so CryptoLocker is a big deal, right? CryptoLocker being this uh, ransomware where people infect computers with malware that encrypts all of their files and everything that they have access to, right? Shared files, everything else, and uploads the encryption key to some remote hacker. Well, if you've got the entire network under central control, you could introduce these signatures and behaviors that when the central controller sees these kind of activities, it can take immediate action to change the network environment. Maybe it blocks off that one computer, for example. Or maybe when it sees a package that looks like encryption keys being uploaded to some untrusted IP address, it takes immediate action at the firewall and blocks that from doing any more damage. So I'm just giving you one example of thousands that we could. That's just dealing with security, right? You can also think about server moves and things like that. When you have uh, virtual machines, let's just say you've got a data center with all kinds of servers and the racks and all that kind of stuff, and you have a major power outage on one of these, you can actually have the network adapt and move the virtual machines, the virtual servers around in the network environment, reconfiguring the network, reconfiguring quality of service. I mean, there's just a ton of amazing stuff that you could do if you had this centralized control of the system. So here's the premise of how SDN works. Every network device has three planes of existence, the data plane, control plane, and management plane. The data plane is where all of the work happens. Like if this is a router, this is where you have the interfaces receiving and forwarding the data. And to do that, it has to de-encapsulate it as it comes in and encapsulate it as it goes back out with uh, rewriting the headers, like the MAC addresses are changing every single one of them. Or if this is a internet router running NAT, it's changing the IP addresses. It has to look up the destination of all of that traffic and figure out where it's going. This is honestly all the stuff that we take for granted that just happens in the background. It's where you see topics like Cisco Express Forwarding come into play which is a method Cisco created to do this even faster. Every network device does something. It works on the network. The data plane is where all of that happens. Whereas the control plane is where its brain exists. 
This is where the intelligence comes from, like the ARP table and the ARP process, which resolves the IP addresses to MAC address, or you're running OSPF or, or RIP, right, to populate the routing table. And so these routers have to communicate to each other what networks they know about and thus make each other more intelligent so the data plane can be effective. Spanning tree protocol, we talked about that in this series, Run in, runs inside of the switches to make sure the network stays loop free. So there's a whole root bridge election and figuring out the best way to get to the root which defines your topology in the switching world. So these protocols like ARP and Spanning Tree and OSPF and RIP allow all of the devices to communicate with each other and then make intelligent decisions independently, right? That's actually known as a distributed control plane where each device has a brain, they exchange information with other devices, and then say, okay, based on the rules that you've given me, I will, for example, figure out the best way to go to reach the root bridge, or I will add these routes to my routing table and thus figure out more destinations I could forward devices to, right? Distributed control plane, you figure out where I'm going with this, right? And then the management plane is how we actually manage the device. Most of the time right now, we do so via SSH or Telnet, and we access the device, type in some commands and thus introduce new instructions that the control plane uses to run the device how we've directed it. So you see where this is going. If every device has its own control plane, right, the distributed control, and each device has to be managed individually, what SDN does is say, well, why don't we take those two planes out and move them to a centralized software controller, leaving the devices with just a data plane. They're still the workhorses, they're still forwarding packets, but instead of us having to manage each one individually, let's have a controller. It's often called an SDN controller, where all that centralized instruction comes from. And that leads us to the concept of northbound and southbound interfaces. <laughs> Something that confused me for a while when I got into SDN initially because I'm thinking, okay, interfaces. So this, this must be like up and down traffic or, or how does this work? So when you hear the concept of northbound and southbound interfaces, the first thing I want you to erase from your mind is interfaces. Like take that word off of there because it's a logical SDN concept. It's not actually physical interfaces on a device. The southbound interface represents all of the communication between the controller. Here's our SDN controller and the network devices. So this essentially represents an API. Have you, any of you heard that term before? Application programming interface? Have you ever, you ever been surfing the web, right? And you're at some site and you're like, hey, I'd like to sign up for an account on the site so I can you know, post in the forums or whatever the case is. And it comes up and it says, hey, well, you could you know, give me your email address and create a, a username and password for the site. Or you can use your Google account, right? Your Gmail uh, uh, account. Or, or you can use your Facebook account. And why is that? Well, because Google and Facebook happen to be really popular, right? And they have user credentials that they have for all of their sites. And so they opened up their site with an API, an application programming interface, allowing all these other sites. Let's just say you're, you're posting on the Jelly Bean forum, right? About uh, blue jelly beans. Uh, allow all these other sites like the Jelly Bean forum to come to them and actually authenticate users against their database of user accounts that have been created. That way you don't have to have individual user accounts for all of these other sites. And then you don't have all these issues with your users forgetting their username and password because it's all centralized in Facebook and Google. So the API concept is replicated right here to where each one of these are now software controlled. And so the people manufacturing devices will create APIs for the controller to come in and say, hey, uh, why don't you go ahead and adjust your routing table? Ooh, why don't you go ahead and add this uh, MAC address to IP address mapping in your ARP table? Ooh, uh, DHCP just assigned this guy an IP address, so why don't you open up a port on him via an access list, right, to, to uh, allow him to get through the, the router. So API calls are going to become regular but they have to be standardized, just like Facebook created a standard way for people to authenticate users against their site. The people manufacturing network devices are going to have to create APIs or southbound interfaces is just the name that they chose for the controller to communicate with them. Keep in mind, let me hang on. This is not a Cisco thing. SDN is an industry thing to where someday, someday, someday over the rainbow, you may be able to buy a controller from Cisco, a network device from Juniper, HP, 
and D-Link, heaven forbid, and integrate them all together in one seamless network environment controlled by the same solution because we're all using standard-based APIs or standard-based southbound interfaces. By the way, that's what's called open flow. This represents a group of people that got together and said, you know what, let's create some standard APIs because you know what, everybody's going to need basic IP communication. Everybody's going to need basic, you know, MAC address learning and CAM table lookups and ARP resolution. So you know what, rather than every single vendor like Cisco and Juniper and everybody else coming up with all their own libraries, let's create this open flow standard of southbound interfaces that anybody can adopt into their controller and anybody can adopt into their network devices. Northbound interfaces, on the other hand, represent outside servers communicating with the controller. See, this controller is awesome and it has the heartbeat of your system. It speaks to all the network devices via the southbound interfaces. It can control them, it can pull analysis from them, etc., etc., etc. So, who's to say that we can't start having outside servers created that does maybe a great analysis of all the network data going on? So, it can find irregularities in there. You know, like, hey, you know what? Normally, that link is at uh, 50 megabits per second, but I've seen it run over the last three weeks at 132 megabits per second. That's weird alert administrator, you know, da, da, da. and so there's some analysis server that we have in there. That's maybe not part of the base controller. It's some add-on functionality. Or maybe there's an extra server that manages, say, our VMware uh, uh, servers. So as VMware needs changes to the network, it can instruct the controller, and the controller can then instruct the network devices, right? So you see, this opens up the whole landscape for outside application developers to create controllers speaking to the SDN controller, which then controls all the network devices. All of that communication in and out of the controller from the outside servers are considered northbound interfaces. And that is just the beginning. That's the foundation of what software-defined networking is as a concept. In the next nugget, I want to break down what does the SDN world look like today and then how does Cisco do this? For now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.